The Onderak children, Nicholas, Lucy, and Alex, are just enjoying life and good health, as they should. They may not know that their parents, along with over 95% of everyone else in Minnesota's Olmstead County, have given permission for their medical records to be used for research. Creating the Rochester Epidemiology Project, a historic, unique, and valuable medical research resource known and respected by researchers around the world, and cited in over 2,000 scientific studies to date. I was studying epidemiology at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and uh, in, in my textbooks it would cite figures like the incidence rates of myocardial infarction and stroke. They were all from the Rochester Epidemiology Project. Um, but we're the only place in the United States that can say we truly have population-based data. It's insanely cool, um, to put it plainly. The, the Rochester Epidemiology Project is important because it allows us today to answer questions in medicine that you would not be able to answer anywhere else. As people live their lives and access medical care, their confidential records documenting medical diagnoses, procedures, and drug prescriptions are created and then maintained for future continuity of care. These data also can be used for research. The Rochester Epidemiology Project, or REP, is a cooperative initiative by Olmsted Medical Center, Mayo Clinic, Rochester Family Medicine Clinic, and other healthcare providers. It collects, archives, and links this medical information from all providers in Olmsted County for the nearly 150,000 people living here. This allows researchers to study health and illnesses in this group. So, we as a community of people living within a relatively isolated geographic area can make contributions to medical research by allowing access to our medical records for study. Records spanning every aspect of our healthcare over our lifetimes. Records of just about everyone in the community, both the healthy and ill, including those with health insurance and those without allowing researchers to discover factors that cause or help prevent diseases and to develop new ways to treat or prevent disease. The idea that I can use this information or data to change the lives of 10 or 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 people is just wonderful. Mayo Clinic has maintained a dossier-type medical record system from the early 1900s starting with the work of the Mayo brothers, Henry Plummer, and Mabel Root. Mabel Root's original index cards are still available to researchers in these old drawers. Since 1966, when Mayo Clinic's Dr. Leonard T. Kurland organized the REP with other collaborating county medical providers, the REP has been continuously funded by the National Institutes of Health. When patients access medical care in Olmsted County, they are given the opportunity to authorize their records to be used in REP research. This is called research authorization. 95% of those asked sign the authorization, but their decision to sign or refuse is honored. Today, most REP medical records are available to qualified researchers electronically and scanning and digitizing operations continue. In the REP, approved medical records from different county care providers, including hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, dental practices, and medical transportation services, are collected and organized by diagnostic codes. Then, they are linked so that all records of a specific person are grouped and stored by the person's name and dates when care was provided. This data is kept confidential with strict security safeguards. Patients need to know we go through several safeguards. The first one is that any researcher that wants to use this medical records data has to go through the Institutional Review Board. Now there's one for Mayo and there's one for OMC, so they have to go through both. And this group looks at patient safety and patient protection. So from our perspective, we are trying to do all that is possible to make sure that the data are only um, 
looked at but by people that have been trained have received specific uh, permission. We who are the researchers are very, very careful. All of the data that has anything to do with anybody is locked up. Authorized researchers work with rep staff to plan and conduct their studies. They're trained on how to access data. They retrieve stored information using codes and dates, reviewing records for patients with or without a given disease, and conduct and publish their study. These studies inform medical knowledge and practice, and changes in medical practice will be reflected in future medical records. The importance of the REP on medical research is significant. There's an asthma study going on right now looking at how some socioeconomic factors in, might influence the development or outcomes of asthma. And so in almost every field, be it the brain with dementia, Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy. There's a huge study on heart failure in our community. Myocardial infarction, congestive valve failure, arrhythmias. We've looked at things like postpartum depression and done uh, studies looking at how often it's diagnosed and found out that we're probably missing about half of it. Bone fractures, osteoporosis, menopause, um, kidney disorders. Uh, you name it, it's probably been looked at in the Rochester Abbey Project. It's, it's a gigantic contribution to medicine. Basically, you have patient files from people going back decades. So we can follow health and illness. We can follow it through families. We can follow it from primary care all the way through subspecialty care. Uh, there's just so many things we can learn from this. Now, the REP is seeking to engage the community to expand the resource to the eight-county southeast Minnesota region with records for up to 500,000 people. And when you reach half a million people, you can answer questions that have to do with rare diseases or diseases of subgroups like children or very elderly. The Rochester Epidemiology Project a research resource respected around the world, allowing researchers to discover factors that cause or help prevent diseases and to develop new ways to treat or prevent disease. Because almost all of us want to help. My personal data is a small piece in this big puzzle, and but without that small piece you can't finish the puzzle. I hope that the, the discoveries that are made, you know, help my, not only me, but my kids, you know, generations to come.